Another perfect landing. Your turn to make breakfast, Gromit. Eggs, I think. And toast with honey today. Step to it, lad. I'm famished. Ouch! Well, that's a fine way to say good morning. I left a note on the fridge in case you forget. Eggs, toast and honey. Silicon flowers, Gromit. A major contribution to our modern lifestyle. Huh? I'm going to have to put the safety lock back on. I'd like to help you with breakfast, lad, but it's all part of your training. Yo! Eh, too, Gromit? Honey pipe directly from the source. Everyone in town will want their own honey tap when word gets out. Honey, how sweet of you, Gromit. <laughs> but where are the eggs and toast? Disconnection? Nothing but bills, Gromit. I can't look at these before I have my breakfast. If we don't find some steady customers soon, I don't know how we'll make ends meet. Oh, all right then, I'll open one, but just the one? Hmm, seems your subscription to Marrow Growers Monthly is up for renewal. Don't suppose you'd consider cancelling? Thought not. Oh, better pay up then. Now, where did I put me pen? Ah, yes.
The living room's out of bounds for now, Gromit. Had to use it for storage. Only temporary, mind. We'll need those crates once the orders start pouring in. Hi, old Wallace. Daniel here. Sorry to leave a message, but it's about that incident to be shot. That blinking mechanical mouse of yours has put me in a right pickle. Happening may be a sniffer 3000 with advanced cheese tracking capabilities, but it chewed through all me fancy tail and me red lister too. Now I know we've always been on good terms, but this morning I find myself not inconsiderably discombobulated. And I can't let it happen again, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to say that with the deepest regret and following police advice, you and your blinking contraptions are banned from my establishment until further notice. Wallace, old chap, come here, Major Crumb. Word in your shell like, can't say where it came from, runs the word, but I'm getting intelligence of unusual airborne activity in your sector. Can't say more than that. Walls have ears, don't you know? But if you take my advice, you look to the heavens and take cover. Going to get pretty sticky, is my guess. Terror from the skies. Yes, that destruction raining down. That sort of thing. Just make sure you and your men stay indoors. Over and out. Still no breakfast? I'm beginning to suspect foul play. Eggs, toast and honey. I can practically taste them already. Hey! Eggs today, Gromit, not porridge. I suppose I should at least pay the wool bill. Dog is getting a little too independent, if you ask me. Phew. 
Phew, that's enough pills for now. Time for some breakfast, methinks. Huh? I'm going to have to put the safety lock back on. That grommet was the sound of my belly. It's saying what I'm too polite to mention. Breakfast is late. Done to a turn. My compliments to the chef. But I'm still one egg short of a breakfast. Cracking eggs, Chuck. Now that's what I call a breakfast feast. Wasn't so difficult, was it, lad? With a hearty plate of eggs and toast under me belt, I'm ready to take on the world. Gromit, I've a strange feeling this is the day our fortunes are going to change. Morning, Wallace. May I have a word? Uh, if it's about yesterday's uh, um, little mishap... Oh no, you see... I can assure you it, it was an accident, Mr. Penier, and I'll certainly pay for the damage to your grocery shop. I was just putting the Sniffer 3000 through its paces. It's still only a prototype, you know. Oh, I realize that, Mr. Wallace. And what better place to test out a cheese detector than in a shop with such an excellent selection of cheeses? Happen. But you'll still have to pay for the damage, I'm afraid. Yes, of course. I'll put it all right. Though funds are, how can I put this, a little tight at the moment. Only until our new business is up and running. Aye, well, that's what I'm here to talk about. I understand you and Gromit are in the honey business now. Fresh deliveries daily, from B to you. <laughs> ah, well, perhaps I can help you get on your feet. I'm having my annual sounding of the Crumpets Festival, and I'm clean out of honey. Can you deliver 50 gallons? 50 gallons? By tonight? Tonight? It'll more than cancel your debt, and it'll be good advertising for you. What do you say? I say... I say yes! We're in business, lad! Heads up, no time for slacking. From B to U has landed its first major order. 50 gallons of honey by tomorrow. I want this place to be a hive of activity. 
It's your chance to show the world what sort of workers you are. They're certainly buzzing with excitement. Or maybe they're hungry. Did you remember to feed them this morning, Gromit? Never mind, lad. I'll do it. I don't want any accidents on my shop floor. Flowers, mm. the perfect meal for a hungry hive. Please love my motivational posters. Nothing like an inspirational poster to boost worker productivity. For some reason, my boys aren't terribly fond of this one. The magnetronic pollinator is the linchpin of the operation. My workers get their rations mechanically. No foraging in flower beds for them. Ouch! Blinking egg! Look alive in there! Ah. There's the hatch from me rocket ship. Remember that moon holiday, Gromit? My workers are very devoted to their queen. No honey yet, Gromit. I wonder if there's something else I need to do to prime the pump, as it were. Uh, bon appetit. Oh! Hmm, not exactly a flood, is it? Gromit. That's the weak link in our production chain. We need more flowers. Any more honey to speak of? Not enough flowers to tip the balance yet. Not to worry. I've got a few ideas. Plans are proceeding apace, Gromit. Just a few kinks to work out, and we'll soon be up to our necks in honey. Carry on. Hold the fort, Gromit. Keep thinking honey. Now where can I find a whole lot of flowers in a hurry? Gromit loves his core box. <laughs> Silicon flowers. Can't feed those to my bees. They demand the organic variety. 
I might find the answer to my problems here, but searching through these books would take me all day. The wells run dry. That was a grand fishing trip, Gromit. Until that giant squid turned up. I'm afraid my bees don't go for silicon flowers. The living room door's stuck. Oh right, it's a storage room now. Mr. Wallace, I'm pleased to see you've emerged from your subterranean lair. I wonder what happened to his little cricket bat. spot of gardening, have you, Miss Flick? Working my green fingers to the bone, but the hard work appears to be paying off. Indeed it does. Blooms everywhere. I call it my purple paradise. It certainly looks delicious. I mean, I imagine it would look delicious if you were an insect. You mean, if I were a bee? Well, now you mention it. You want to feed my flowers to your bees? That is, if you don't mind. How many would you like? As many as you can spare. Oh, you can have all you want, Mr. Wallace. Oh, much obliged, Miss Flint. Here, you can jolly well grow your own. Uh, right ho. I put a new roof on Mr. Nutter's house. Mr. Nutter? Surely you're acquainted with our neighbor, Mr. Nutter, the squirrel. Uh, I'm not on first name terms with any of the neighborhood animals, I'm afraid. What about Gromit? Oh, no, he isn't either. Where's that dog of yours? He's in the cellar, supervising our bees. You keep bees in your cellar? How very odd. Oh, there wasn't space in the dining room. I say, those roses look appetizing. Uh, if you're a bee... I'm sure they do. And they smell... <sighs> heavenly. But they're not here to be trampled over by your buzzing bees. That's a healthy looking, uh, what do you call it? Foxglove. If you want to grow them, you've got to know them. Such a fragrant bouquet. <clears throat> I hadn't noticed those flowers before. I shouldn't wonder. They're morning glories, and they're usually tucked up in bed by the time you emerge from your underground lair. Their scent is divine. Attracts a lot of bees, I suppose. Swarms of them, but I don't let them linger. That flower hasn't bloomed yet. I know it hasn't, the lazy thing. Oh, but the wait will be worth it. Oh? This flower will be the piece de resistance of my purple paradise. And the scent, absolutum heavenly. 
I'm simply mad about the purple pansy. No flowers in here. There's nothing growing here. And whose fault is that? You had a garden, Wallace, but you raised it to the ground to feed your silly bees. Now, you're making eyes at mine across the fence. But you're sharply plucking any of my blooms. Kindly reserve your green fingers for number 62. Hmm. I suppose I should have planted the seeds first. I suppose... There now, with hard work and a little luck, you should have a nice bed of flowers in two or three months. I can't wait two or three months. I've got a deadline. This evening. No, oh, you poor simple man. Nothing grows that quickly. I wonder. Rex Armstrong's quick grow muscle formula. Watch them sprout in seconds. Hmm. If it works on people, perhaps I could adapt it to work on flowers. Three miracle ingredients. Groating, Energize, Strongium. Well, I need a miracle, and fast. It shouldn't be too tricky to knock up a batch myself. Then we'll see who's got the grandest garden in West Wallaby Street. The hive will be humming in no time. Can't take an old soldier by surprise. Morning, Major Crumb. It is, if you don't mind enemy invasions. I beg your pardon? Didn't you get my message? Received intelligence of a major air assault. Expect the sirens to sound any minute. Hope you know where your dearest air raid shelter is. I do recall something about that, but Major Crumb, are you sure you're not mistaken? I know, I know, I've made predictions before, but I'm not crying wolf. This time, I've got proof. Not that I wouldn't take any kind of aerial disturbance over West Wallaby Street seriously, you understand, but just pray your house isn't reduced to a pile of smoky rubble, and don't stray too far. You'll want to be close to a shelter when the sirens go off. Uh, no, Major, but still. And if you don't believe me, I invite you to inspect the evidence. Have you heard the sirens yet, Major Crumb? Don't be daft, man! If I had, I'd be in the shelter now! And if I were you, I'd stick close by! And if you don't believe me, I invite you to inspect the evidence. A jar? It's what's inside the jar that counts. Incontrovertible evidence that the enemy is on the move! Does it? I can only see a snail. Of course it's a snail. But what's she trying to tell us? That's the important thing. Uh, what is she trying to tell us? Look at her, man. She's retreated into her shell in the middle of the day. And that means only one thing. It means she knows trouble is about to strike from the heavens. Law of nature, Wallace. Learned it in France during the war. Never wrong yet. Good man, Wallace. I see you at least appreciate the seriousness of the situation. Now, spread the word. If people don't believe what an old soldier has to say, perhaps they'll listen to the snail.
sky is blue, and still it rains on yours truly. Why does everything happen to me? The sky is blue, and still it rains on yours truly. Ah, Mr. Wallace! You're standing in a puddle, Mr. Paneer. And <laughs> the shoes aren't waterproof. Bear with me for a moment, Mr. Paneer. Major Crumb wanted me to show you this. It's a snail, Mr. Wallace. I know. Why are you showing me a snail? Well, it's in its shell, you see. And according to Major Crumb, when a snail goes into its shell during the day, it means we can expect untold airborne activity of an unpleasant nature. Go home, Wallace, and get some rest. Reckon you've been overdoing the inventing? Have you come to deliver my order? Uh, it's not quite ready yet, I'm afraid. You're not going to disappoint me? Not after yesterday's little incident? Oh, no. You can count on from B to U. I don't understand the delay. It's only 50 gallons of honey. Well, the bees get a bit confused. They're on the modern metric system, you see. Takes them a while to do the conversion. Ooh. But you will deliver the honey in time for my festival of crumpets, won't you? I'd hate to have to serve jam. Everyone does jam. Don't worry, Mr. Paneer. Your order is in safe hands. Order is on its way? Uh, yes. Of course. Just a few kinks in the production line, that's all. Nothing to fret over. I'm looking forward to your festival of crumpets, Mr. Paneer. I'm afraid you're barred from my store, Wallace. Uh, barred? Due to the devastation caused yesterday by your invention. I'm ever so sorry, Chuck. Looks like... Can it really be... Cheese? Indeed it is, Wallace. Wednesday Day, your favorite. And am I to take it that these are... Yes, free samples. Go on, duck in. Don't mind if I do, Mr. Paneer. One for now. And one for later. Forget Mr. Wallace, 50 gallons by sunset. Pity it's closed. Oh, I could murder a sausage roll or two. Now that's a fine looking post box. It would make a good chassis for my honey powered vacuumatic. But that's tomorrow's project. if the landlord would be interested in subscribing to my honey service. Well, no sense in looking for new orders when I haven't fulfilled the first. Ah. Well, if it isn't Wallace. I had a notion you'd be nosing round the police station this morning. That's nice. I'll leave that be. I'll leave that where it is. Hmm. Inadvisable. I think I'll leave that alone.
Wallace in the honey business now, I hear. Oh, you've heard the buzz, have you? <laughs> oh, oh, indeed I have. It's all over town. It'll never get off the ground. Stupid idea, if you ask me. And nobody did. Couldn't get honey out of a honey jar, that one. Excuse my husband. He's a right misery gut sometimes. So, might you be interested in signing up for my honey deliveries, Mrs. Gabberley? Fresh daily? Ooh, I should say so. I'm partial to a spot of honey for my tea. Where's the money? We'll never see honey for tea. Or breakfast, for that matter. Oh, shut up, you. Our Wallace knows what he's doing. He's got a head for business. Is that a head? I took it for a parsnip. <sighs> Pay him no mind. If you'd like to sample my honey, Mrs. Gabbley, there'll be a free tasting tonight at Mr. Paneer's Tea and Crumpet Festival. Oh, is that so? Well, I'll have to pop by. I wouldn't bother. He'll never make the delivery. Your husband seems a trifle miffed. Don't fret, Pat. He's always miffed about summit. Chin up, Chuck. I'm sure it'll all work out. When will you be bringing the honey to Mr. Paneer's? Uh, soon. I still have one or two technical difficulties to sort out, but I think I'm on the right path. Ha! The path to oblivion, most likely! You be quiet! But those be... Uh, I couldn't help but notice the flowers on your window ledge, Mrs. Gabberling. Ah, lovely, aren't they? Bring a touch of summer to the town square. Especially the purple pansies. Always been partial to pansies, me. You should see the flat. It's full of them. They're uh, blinking weeds, if you ask me. Can't abide them. Oh, go and suck a lemon, you moaning mini. Ah! Look what you've done, you clumsy old! And open up that window when I'm yelling at you! All right, <laughs> but only to prove your insults don't get to me anymore. <laughs> I can deflect them all. Is that so? I'd be happy to take these flowers off your hands, Mrs. Gabberley. That is, if they make your husband unhappy. That's a good reason to keep them to my way of thinking. But go ahead if you want them. Much obliged. Uh, mo morning, Constable Dibbins. You're off to an early start today. Not planning any more visits to the shops, are you? Oh, no. Yesterday was a one-off. I'm in town on business. Is that so? Here on business, you say, Wallace? What line are you in these days? Honey, Constable Gibbons, from B to you. Piped fresh to your home or workplace daily. Do you have a sweet tooth, Constable? Well, I have been known to dollop it on a trumpet now and again. Then perhaps you'd like to subscribe. I only procure my honey from a reputable sources. You can rely on from B to you for your honey needs, Constable. As our motto says, all the sweet and none of the sting. So long as it's nothing like your Sniffer 3000 cheese detecting device. Put your mind at ease, Constable. All our bees are bonded and insured. Hmm. Not killer bees from abroad, are they? Certainly not. They're West Wallaby Street born and bred. That's so much, I suppose. 
Mr. Paneer will unveil my honey at tonight's festival of crumpets. Is that so? Well, if Mr. Paneer's prepared to take a chance on you, I suppose I can too. So, can I sign you up for my honey service, Constable Dibbins? I'll pop over to Mr. Paneer's and have a tips, if I like it. And there's no undesirable side effects. We'll see. Poor Sniffer 3000. I only just put the finishing touches on it yesterday, and it's already fallen afoul of the law. Do you know anything about snails, Mrs. Gabberly? Uh, I know they eat them in continental parts. Well, yes, but do you think there's anything special about this one? To be honest, I couldn't rightly tell. May I show you something, Constable Dibbins? Is it important? It might be. That's a snail, Wallace. Do you notice anything peculiar about it? Only the person what's holding it. I, I, I noticed you received my petition for early release of the Sniffer 3000, Constable Dibbins. Yes. And I notice it's attracted the signatures of just one man and his dog. We're only appealing for natural justice. But your blinking cheese detector thing of me, what do you call it, destroyed an entire grocery store. Uh, teething problems. It's still only a prototype. A prototype? It's a villain, if you ask me. A diabolical device. You can see that. In its face. My machine isn't evil, Constable Dibbins. It's just got a short fuse and a few loose nuts. Hmm, we'll see. I'm going to formally interview this glorified tin can of yours, and if it can convince me that it's not a menace to society, then perhaps I'll release it into your custody. You there, prisoner. Kindly look at me when I'm talking to you. That mattress looks awfully hard. Just as well the Sniffer 3000 goes into sleep mode automatically. Fear not, my little cheese-sniffing friend. Soon have you out of there. The Sniffer doesn't work that way, Constable Gibbons. You've got to... I'm conducting this interview, Wallace, if you don't mind. But, Constable Dibbins, the sniffer can't understand you. It's only a... An impudent scoundrel of a what you may call it. I was right about this heap of scrap. <laughs> it's wired for wickedness. We've had our little chat. And? I'm afraid there's no talking to your sniffer. Hardwired for criminality, I'd say. Oh, there's Miss Sniffer 3000. Banged up like a common criminal. Oh, breaks my heart. That cheese detector's not a bad machine. Just a bit over keen. It's all the energites in its system. Energites? It seems to me... Yes. Energites is one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's Quick Grow Muscle Formula. I used my last energite battery to fuel the sniffer. I'll have to get it back if I want to finish the formula. see fit to grant my appeal, Constable Dibbins? Not on your Nelly. That heap of nuts and bolts is now but trouble. 
couldn't give me a single straight answer when I tried to interrogate it. It only responds to certain commands. I know, I programmed it. Perhaps you could try a gentler approach? Well, I'll have another chat with it. More friendly like. Oh, yes. Oh, much obliged, Constable Dibbins. I ain't promising nothing, mind. Time we had a little chat. Look at me when I'm talking to you. The sniffer doesn't work that way, Constable Dibbins. You've got to... I'm conducting this interview, Wallace, if you don't mind. If that's how he wants to play it, then he can stay in here until he rusts for all I care. No change, I'm afraid. And its moral compass seems to be badly malfunctioning. I do wish my Sniffer 3000 had given a better account of itself for Constable Gibbons. But how could it without its remote control? Point in showing her to me, old man. I'm already aware of the danger. Show her to the others, the unbelievers. Oh. Hmm, not exactly a flood, is it? Any more honey to speak of? Not enough flowers to tip the balance yet. Not to worry. I've got a few ideas. Hello, Wallace. But here, here again. Just checking on that honey order. Almost ready, I hope. This year's festival of crumpets could be the best yet if your honey's as sweet as you say. I'm so sorry I had to ban you and your inventions from the actual premises. Copy to one side. Looks like a pearler. You can come and pick it up anytime. time. Penny Produce. Hello, Mr. Penny. What is? How's that honey order coming along? Oh, smashing. Just smashing. It's a honey of an order, all right. <laughs> Uh, what was the quantity again? Fifty gallons. Fifty gallons. Fifty teaspoons would be easier. You won't let me down, will you? I don't want 
what my respected festival of crumpets turning into a mad crumpet rumpus? Oh no, Mr. Paneer, certainly not. Uh, goodbye. I must have reset the auto hammer yesterday when I was cracking me walnuts. Wrong setting for eggs, I should think. It's got squirrel tracks in it. That pesky rodent must have been at me toast again. He certainly is crackers for toast. A nice cup of strongium tea ought to spark up the old grey matter. Hey, bring that back, you thieving rascal! Hold on a minute. Strongium. That's one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's Quick Grow Muscle Formula. I need that tea bag. Cold toast. Shame to let it go to waste. The remote control for my Sniffer 3000. Too bad about the teething problems. Still, this might come in handy. Last night's bedtime snack. Gorgonzola makes a nice change from Wensleydale. That's the racket Gromit used when he took the cup at the Brambleton Open, K9 division. <sighs> Time for a nap. Oh, no, better not. Trap door. This call box has been a boon for Gromit. No matter where he is in the house, he's never far from his master's voice. That'll put me right to sleep. Goose back. Return to the scene of the crime, have we? The Sniffer 3000 wasn't cut out for prison life. It runs on energize, not porridge. To get my Sniffer 3000 out of jail and my Energites out of the Sniffer.
Must be awfully hot under that helmet, I reckon. A sunny day like today. It's a trifle sweltering, yes. But danger and discomfort are all in the line of duty for an officer of the law, though most folk don't appreciate it. Cheesy nipple, Officer Gibbons. Well, well, well. Wensleydale. <gasps> Not attempting to bribe an officer, are you, Wallace? For shame. The great British Bobby cannot be bought off with a cheesy nibble. How much does a helmet like that weigh? Eight pound and five ounces. Some days feels more like eighty pounds. do you intend to hold my sniffer 3000, Constable Dibbins? As long as the law requires. It's not malicious. It just malfunctions from time to time. Is that so? And sometimes it short circuits when it gets overheated. Perhaps it does. Why, why don't you try uh, talking to it once more? All right. Once more. You there, prisoner. Kindly look at me when I'm talking to you. That's more like it. Now you've had time to think, what can you tell me about what happened yesterday? Feel bad about what you did, do you? He's weeping. Maybe this contraption's got feelings after all. Now, I want a truthful answer. If I release you from custody, will you do it again? Well, I'll be damned. The prisoner has been interviewed. Yes. And having exhibited signs of repentance, I am prepared to release you into your protective custody. Provided, Wallace, you give me an assurance that you'll keep your blinking eye on him. Or it. Or whatever he answers to. Oh, I'll keep an eye on him, Constable Dibbins. You have my word on that. Hey, young Wallace, love. How's business? Pardon me, Mrs. Gabberley. I wonder, uh, that is, could you spare a... Verb. Sorry? Give me a verb, Wallace. An action word. Oh, playing a word game, are we? In a manner of speaking. Oh, well, let's see. A verb. Savage can be a verb. Ooh, I like that. That's a good one. Now I need a thing. A thing? Aye, you know, something physical you could touch. Something I can touch? I've got a good one. Dodo. Why not? Now a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Spotted. That's a descriptive word. No. Oh, 
Oh, that's a corker, that's it. <laughs> Last one. Nearly done. I need another thing. Or, like a person or animal. A person or animal? Hmm, now, let me see now. Grub? Yes, that's a thing. Hey! What is it now? Go, savage! A dodo! You spotted! Grub! Cute little bleeders, grubs! You have to keep one as a pet! <laughs> Names are Edwina! A good solid insult, I thought. But maybe we need to think different. That was uh, an interesting word game, Mrs. Gabbley. Want to play again? I need a word, Wallace. How about cheese? It's one of my favourites. No, an action word. Oh, yes, an action word. Pop is a nice action word. Fine, that'll do. Now, a thing, if you please. Right, a thing. Grub? Why not? Now, a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Uh, mild? <laughs> You're good at this. And finally... A person or a thing. A person or a thing. Toad? Yes, that's a thing. Hey! What is it now? Go, pop! A grub, you mild toad! The toad is a noble beast, but mild. That's a cruel blow! He's proud of being nasty, that's the problem. But maybe that's his weakness, too. You've got quite a vocabulary, Mrs. Gabberley. Another round now. Give me an action word. I've got one. Stuff. Fine, that'll do. Now, a thing, if you please. Right. A thing. Turkey? Why not? Now, a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Uh, mild? Oh, you're good at this. And finally, a person or a thing. A person or a thing. Gentlemen? Yes, that's a thing. Hey! What is it now? Go stuff! A turkey, you mild gentleman! Hey! You do know how to wound a bloke, Winnie! Eee! Ha ha! Got him that time! Serves him right for being such a grumpy old grandad! Would you mind, uh... If I, uh, that is, could you see your way fit to lending me that pot of pansies, Mrs. Gabberly, uh, for business purposes? Business purposes? Well, be my guest. I've got bunches of them. Uh, 
Uh, bon appetit. Oh! Hmm, not exactly a flood, is it? The mixomatic will be perfect for whipping up a tasty growth formula. One unit of energized fluid for a creamy finish. One third of a quick grow miracle muscle formula. Now I've just got to knock up some grotein and strongium. long drop. Oi, come back here, you thieving rascal. That's my tea bag. I won't have you threatening that dear little creature. Not while he's in my garden. You've come buzzing back, Mr. Wallace. As a bee to a blossom, eh? Here you are, little fella. Try some toast. Yes, do feed him. I'm sure the little mite's hungry. for exactly you're persistent in your attentions this morning mr. Wallace uh, I wonder miss flit if you would be so kind as to uh, hand me that tea bag tea bag mr. Wallace what tea bag the one on your um Ooh. Are you feeling quite well, Mr. Wallace? What is it, Mr. Wallace? I need that tea bag. I see no tea bag. Right, uh, oh, there. Where? Oh, uh, uh, sitting, um. Sitting? On your. <clears throat> My what? <clears throat> the man is quite mystifying sometimes. It's 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 right in front of your eyes. What is? The tea bag. Tea bags again, Mr. Bullis. If you just look down, Miss Flit. Maybe you'd better go and lie down, Wallace, until this silliness passes. You're not making any sense. <clears throat> Tea bags again, Mr. Wallace? No. I realize this may seem a trifle irregular, but Major Crumb insisted I show you this. It's. Uh, it, uh, oh. A snail? In my garden? <laughs> I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, they say that the blooms lower down on the plant give off a sweeter scent. Is that so? Uh, yes. 
you'll discover if you lean way down the topmost blooms are perfectly adequate to my needs. Thank you. <sighs> Perhaps you'd like to give the purple pansies a sniff. You'd have to uh, lean over, of course, but... I see no point in leaning over and sniffing my purple pansies. I'm giving them the cold shoulder until they decide to shape up and bloom for me. Have you brought it, Mr. Vollis? Hey up, Wallis, love. How's business? I hate to trouble you for another pot of pansies, Mrs. Gabberly. Oh, no trouble at all. Take it. A gift from one flower lover to another. Miss Flint, if you'll just take a look at the pansies, I think you'll... I told you, Mr. Wallace. I refuse to let those yellow hooligans have the satisfaction of... Oh, purple. You see? They're mending their ways. They just needed a firm talking to, that's all. Mother forgives you, you naughty little pansies. Sweet satisfaction. Action, Mr. Woods. Yes, indeed. Very sweet. I wonder where Major Crumb disappeared to. One dose of strongium into the mix. 66.6% <laughs> of a quick grow miracle muscle formula. A nice dollop of protein and the formula will be complete. It's a comfort to know we're well stocked with biscuits. You made it to the shelter. I'd given you up for lost. Caught in the crossfire, were you? Stop pacing about, Wallace. You're making the rest of the men nervous. You're looking at my case, aren't you, Wallace? Well, I suppose I was, Major. Bet you'd like to know what's inside. I am curious, yes. This case is packed full of government issue protein bars. Protein? Rations, Wallace. Emergency rations for. emergencies, obviously. Been stockpiling them since the war. Enough nutrition in them to feed a man under fire for a whole day. And very tasty they look, too. Tasty? They're full, but packed with high strength protein. I'd love to try one. Out of the question, I'm afraid. You don't have clearance. And besides, protein bars are only issued in the event of civil emergencies. Orders are orders, Wallace. By George, this is an emergency! Private Grubbit! I hereby issue you one protein bar. Guard it well, and see that it lasts you all day. Wallace, here's one for you as well. Much obliged. Mind off the carnage up there! 
would you like to hear one of my old war stories? I'd help pass the time. Well, I hate to... Uh... Oh, of course you would. I brought visual aids. <laughs> I can still see it Wait! Careful, Wallace. You're heading into hostile territory. The enemy has clearly landed and most likely set up camp in West Wallaby Street. Who knows what the blighters have done to our once peaceful neighborhood? If you make it back alive, you'll have to give us a full report. In the meantime, eat your croaking rations. The croaking will keep your strength up, especially if you're captured. Brave lad! We'll keep the home fires burning. You see, Private Grummet, I told you he'd make it back to us alive. Our Wallace is a fighter. Bagged a few of those blighters, did you? that fellow? That's me as a young recruit, off to basic training. How I cried when they cut off my golden curls. But I cheered up as soon as they issued me with a beautiful set of dog tags. Best useful dog tags. If you happen to forget your rank or name, you've got it right there. Never going to battle without your dog tags, Wallace. As I said, I was marching along. <clears throat> what a face! That's me kitted out for heavy combat. That helmet took many a dent before the war was through. Without it, I could have become seriously loopy. Take my advice, Wallace. Never go into battle without a regulation helmet like the one in this picture. I could have stayed in Nurse Fifi's care forever. Uh, uh, now, there's a sign. That's me posing with Mother next to my 40 millimeter bofers. Look at the size of that monster. Big Betty, we called her. The gun, not the mother. Sounds like you were quite a soldier, Major Crumb. Well, Wallace, why the past tense? Uh, oh dear. Once a soldier, always a soldier. Something you civilians will never grasp. And I'd be happy to prove it by charging into the fray. That is, if I were recommissioned and had a proper helmet with a cute little brim, and if I could find someone to take charge of this shelter and distribute the groating bars. Ah, Queen, God bless her. Sure, she looks thinner. Last time I stood to attention during the national anthem. I thought you might find this useful, Major Crumb. A helmet! By George Wallace, there's nothing like a good helmet. Makes a fellow want to put himself in the path of projectiles. If you know what I mean. But I haven't been recommissioned. So that's where the dog tags went. I'm sure Gromit will be glad to get them back. What's the situation above? Fire and desolation as far as the eye can see? My God, I wish I could be up there. I found these in the hall, Major Crumb, and... Dog tags! 
I've been recommissioned. Bound to happen, of course. Can't leave good military material sitting on the shelf. My place is in the treasure. By thunder, I'm a soldier again. Sir George is ready for his dragon. And yet, duty compels me to remain here. No one else to guard the groating bars. Confounded sense of duty. Gromit could do the job. Private Gromit? Can I entrust my precious cache of grouting bars to a Pongo? Perhaps so. He's proven himself a trusty foot soldier. Yes. If I am called away to the front, I'd feel comfortable leaving Private Gromit in charge. Good heavens. I shouldn't be skulking around in a cellar like a frightened rat. I'm a soldier by thunder! Private Gromit, I hereby appoint you officer commanding this air raid shelter. Here, you pass out the rations. I've got a war to win. Charge! Now to get my hands on a protein bar. Gromit! Stop playing around, Gromit! Of all the... Hope the bees don't mind that I raided their hive for spare parts. Oh dear. Hope Major Crumb isn't too disappointed when he discovers we're not under attack. That anti-aircraft gun gives me a fantastic idea for a new invention. Request dispensation of protein bars, uh, soldier. One generous chunk of protein to give it texture. Now to mix up my very own quick grow muscle formula. That ought to do it. No, the mixomatics all mixed up. Stop! Stop! Help! Drum it! Oh, thanks, lad. Checking to see if anything sprouted yet, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Miss Flip. Really, I don't see what you're hoping to. Formula works. We're in business now. You see, Gromit, look where a bit of enterprise can get you. If I hadn't found that flyer you chucked in the bin, I'd never have been able to concoct my miracle grow formula. And then where would we be? You really must be careful what you chuck out, you know? Uh, blinking Nora! Oh, my word! I think I'm going to faint. This ought to be plenty of fuel for the old pollinator. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's champion, that is. Fifty, fifty gallons of honey, and just in time for my annual tea and crumpet festival. Pleasure doing business with you, Wallace. Always aim to please, our bees. That's the last of our bills, Gromit, and we've got just about enough left over for that little holiday we've been planning. This year, I fancy... Blackpool. Oh, oh yes, lad. I think our money troubles are over at last. Air raid! Air raid! Petals, oh, caissons dear. everywhere! Not this again. Excellent vantage point. Prepare for a crash landing, you devils! Sorry, Wallace, but I'm going to have to commandeer your dining room. Now, just a minute, Major Cross. No time to argue, old man. The whole chrome's under bombardment. But here they come! What's in it, Gromit? Giant bees! Heaven help the good citizens of West Wallaby Street! Civilians, out! But... That's an order, Wallace! Private Gromit, kindly escort this civilian from the battle zone. Keep the faith, soldier! West Wallaby Street needs you! Good heavens, Gromit! You don't suppose those monsters have anything to do with our honey-making operation, do you? Bumbling egg! My quick-grow formula! It didn't just affect the flowers! Just hope it's a wrong number, and not more bad news. Yes, Mr. Paneer. Uh, well, of course you're upset. Being dive-bombed by giant bees isn't good for any business. We're doing all we can to get the situation under control. Uh, normal honey service will be resumed as soon as possible. Uh, with normal-sized bees. That's a promise. There's a giant fly in the soup, lad. And it's shaped like a bee. They're taking over the town. Time to read the riot act. I am their employer, after all. Oh! They won't listen. They're completely out of control. This funny business has a sting in the tail and no mistake. Oh! Do something for me! Hello, from B to... Oh, Constable Dibbins. I know Constable Dibbins. Yes, uh, Mr. Pinnacle says... Uh, yes, I know, I know, it's... Ah, Mr. Gabble here. I ain't much good at eating on one pie. But I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not a daft but after all... What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Just a minute. What's this? Ah! Giant biggest bees! Oh, my kitty heart! There's only one thing can poop round here. What could have caused this? Ah, 
said, get out. I may be knocking on, but I ain't finished yet. Yes, I know. I've got to look into that leak. Something seems to be blocking the downspout around the corner. But that's not my biggest concern at the moment. Chuck, you're not about to let a few hooligan bees keep you from your business. Is that you, Winnie? Are you coming back to me at last? Oh, it's just that dog. Boggy off your mongrel, and if she sent you, tell her I ain't gonna come crawling. Gabbly don't beg. That blinking dog again! Go bother someone else, you mangy mutt! Still yesterday's news, I'm afraid. Delivery man hasn't been today. Too scared of bees, I reckon. Your master certainly made a mess of things with that sniffer, whatchamacallit. But yesterday was a walk in the park compared with today's mess. Giant bees! Oi! It ain't closing time yet. Here now, you lummock, put that back up. Blinking Nora, look at Mr. Paneer, shut up in his shop like a prisoner, and all on account of a few blinking bees. You don't see Winnie Gabbley chucking in the towel, didn't close during the Hedgehog Riots of 72, and I ain't closing now. Besides, where would I go if I did? I ain't going back tip flat with old man Gabbley. Not till he says he's sorry. Tossed out all me pansies, he did. He's right gormless, that husband of mine. And with never a kind word for his hard-working wife. You can't imagine what it's like living with a stubborn off like that. Well, I'll show him I can be just as stubborn. I'll stay here till he says sorry, or the bees carry me off. Oh, I know the old man don't mean to be so hard. Just his way. But I'm a sensitive soul at heart. Beneath this tough exterior, Edwina Gabberley is like a delicate tropical flower. They can't bloom in a patch of thorns. He's got to mend his ways and apologize. Or oh, so help me, I'll box his blinking ears till wash day! Not a customer all day. Hasn't been this dead since the Great Cheese Famine of 65. But I ain't going home, not till Gabberley apologises. Ah, Mr. Gabberley here. I ain't much good at eating humble pie. But I spoke out of turn yesterday. You're not. Damn but after all, what I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Well, biting dogs come limping home. There now, weren't so hard, were it? Is that you, Winnie? Breaking code of silence, are you? No need for silence, now you've shown a bit of humility. Humility? Me? Never! Oh, you don't fool me. 
You're just a big old softy, and I know it. Hey, I need me head examined. Keeping shop open when town's crawling with giant bees. What's got into you, Winnie? Stay back, I say. Oh, Winnie Gabbley. Tell me, you want me to do something about the giant bees? We're on the case, all right? Then buzzing bandits will feel the full weight of the law, make no mistake. But, uh, well, it's complicated. Don't know what the charges would be, exactly. Nothing in the penal code about giant bees, so far as I can see. But rest assured, I'm looking. And tell that master of yours, he left some at behind. There was another cheese, too. But I kept it for me sandwich. Fair payment for me troubles, says I. <laughs> Flip frying pan, lad. The timer mechanism is very delicate. It's liable to spring at odd moments. Well, well after all, it was an innocent mistake. for the delay, Mr. Paneer. I think you'll find the streets are now B3. Thank heavens for the boys in blue. Now, I'll have to ask you to accompany me to the station. There's some paperwork we need to fill out. Nothing too bothersome. Happy to do my part. It's citizens like you what make my job a pleasure, Mr. Paneer. I know Constable Dibbins. Well, yes, like I said, he's very well trained. Right then. Goodbye, Constable. Good work, lad. Seems you took care of the downtown gang good and proper. But so long as they're still supersized, our job's only half done. I'd better get to work on a reverse growth formula. Cracking job, Cromit. Those bees in town will think twice before harassing law-abiding citizens again. But, uh, we still have a little local difficulty round here, don't we? You take care of that, and I'll stay here and work on the reverse growth formula. If I can work, that is, with all this racket going on.
Opia! Now, listen to me. Nice doggy woggy. I'm trapped in this tree by giant bees. Do you understand? You must take a message to your master. I need him to get me down from here. Can you tell him that? Oh, uh, uh, wait a minute. Give him this. It's a note. Oh, tell him to hurry. I, I can't hold on much longer. Brilliant work, lad. You've bagged the bulk of the bees. But the West Wallaby Gang is still on the rampage, aren't they? What's this, lad? An SOS note? From Miss Flit. Why didn't you show it me earlier? Hang on, Miss Flit. Help is on the way! Ow! Oh, the street is still overrun with bees, Gromit. They won't let me out the door. You'll have to do something, lad. Private Grummit! It's looking grim out there! That's right, soldier! Help steady my aim! For you, Private Gromit. Why, I feel like a young man again. Calls for a celebration, Private. Meet you in the mess in twenty. Classified all the bees, Gromit. Good lad. I knew I could count on you. The 
That's right. Poor Miss Flit is still trapped in that tree, isn't she? I'm coming, Miss Flit. Oh, it seems I'm underdressed. Gracious! Hang on, Miss Flit. Must ah! hit So that's the story, Miss Flit. I'm afraid my miracle growth formula led to some uh, super-sized problems. I hope you're going to get rid of the infernal stuff. Oh, I am. And rest assured, all the bees have been dealt with safely and humanely. Well, that's a relief. But weren't you scared, facing down an angry swarm of giant bees all by yourself? Frightened? Oh, well, I, uh... Well, I was heavily outnumbered, of course, but uh, they soon saw who was boss and that the uh, sting was on the other foot. I was terrified. That's only natural, Miss Flit. Uh, uh, well, I had a twinge or two myself at times, you know, but keep a cool head. That's my motto. Look your adversary square in the eye and never let yourself get carried away. <laughs> Pollinator thingamajig to take all the hard work out of honey making. Oh, I'm beginning to think I should never have mixed this growth formula at all. I ought to chuck it away. Hey! Easy, old girl. No need to get excited. Put me down gently and no one will get hurt. Oh dear. Nothing in the beekeeper's manual about aerial abduction. Help! Robbie! Atta boy! I knew you'd come through! Makes the ladder, man! What are you waiting for, Gromit? Place the ladder! Oh. 
Yoke! That just makes her squeeze me harder. If only she'd loosen her grip for a second or two, I'm sure I could wriggle free. little episode in one piece. More than I can say for the autopilot, I'm afraid. Look, the autopilot! Oh dear, looks like our troubles aren't quite over. Look out behind you, Bobby! He put, he put, babe! I'll try and lose her in here! The honey could use a little kick. Lad. I've done it, Gromit! I've found the antidote to that pesky growth formula! Now we can finally cut our bee problem down to size! Though, there is one small... Uh, um, complication... <laughs> 